All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Hey, hi, Coach. This is Polly with Cardinal Couple. It's the former Cardinal great Gabby Vincent getting some playing time with the NWSL up in Utah. Just some thoughts and recollections and, and news on her. Yeah, actually, I just spoke with her yesterday. So uh, Utah's first game was yesterday. Obviously, um, if you watch the game, she did not get in. Uh, and she right now, I think she has to continue to be a role player until she gets an opportunity. And um, the Gabby that I know and coached will do exactly that. So I think she's loving everything that's going on right now. Super happy that the NWSL is playing. Um, they're all out in Utah. All of the teams are out there, and they've kind of condensed the season to a month um, and, and are playing a, a round-robin format and then going into the playoffs off, off of that. So um, she's doing well, happy to be playing, and, and certainly for her, she's already out in Utah, so there was no travel. Coach, it's Jody Dimley with uh, Cardinal Authority. Just what what have you uh, what have you been doing since the last time we talked to you? And and I guess update us on how many of your student athletes uh, are back on campus right now. Yep. Okay. So the last time we talked, I think we were just getting close to our our kids, what we call phase two, um, back on campus. So that has happened, and 15 of our young women came back, and um, they're they're all set. They're practice not practicing, but they're cleared to work out with um, our strength and conditioning coach. So they've been doing that, um, doing rocking it big time with regard to following the policies and protocols that we have in place from a COVID standpoint. Um, just super excited that they're back together and that they have an opportunity to work out together as a team. July 7th is the next phase for us and then we'll bring in I believe it's 12 more of our kids will come uh, July 7th and that will include the addition of our six first-time freshmen so at that point we will have everybody back on campus um, unfortunately the coaches still can't do anything with them but August 3rd the night of August 3rd we're tentatively slated to start preseason and then the fourth we can we can kick everything off. Karen, this is Kent Spencer with WHAS 11. How closely, you know, obviously you, you're not involved in the decision-making process when it comes to the fall, but how closely will you watch these other professional soccer leagues that are getting ready or, or have started or getting ready to, to start kind of with, with uh, fingers crossed a little bit that all things go well? Yeah, I mean, fortunately for us, like I just said, Gabby Vincent's with the NWSL, and we I still talk to some players that are playing in the NWSL. So um, hearing what they're doing and, and they're being super cautious and trying to um, follow all the protocols so they can, uh, you know, they can have what they would deem as a full season, even though it's been already modified. Um, and obviously, I think they're kind of uh, what happens with those teams right now is really what we'll be guided by. Um, our kids are awesome. I just had a Zoom call with them the other day, and they understand that the decisions that they make um, – will directly impact and affect how long our season can go. So um, they're great. These kids, these young people are great. They're super disciplined. Uh, discipline's a part of their daily life because they're high level athletes. So if they have to incorporate one more layer of discipline and, and really just be smart about where they're going and who they're going with, um, they're doing it. They're definitely doing it. Karen Hayes, Jody, Coach, as far as things that go on with the program in, in July, obviously camps for the younger players in past years have been a big thing. Can you give us any update or information on those? Yeah, well, we um, made the decision not to have any camps this summer. Um, again, I think the the thought behind that was to really make sure we take care of the student athletes who will be on campus and try to limit the amount of people that are coming to campus. And I think that's a super smart move right now for us and for anybody that would be coming to campus. So although we think it's a, a big bummer that we didn't have the camps, um, it might make it that much more exciting for these young kids to come to our games um, if and when they happen in the fall. Coach Hayes, Jody, again, do you, as far as what they're able to do with the voluntary workouts right now, what what are they what are they doing and how how would it how would that differ maybe from any other normal year as far as 
this time of the year goes and, and what they're doing and kind of working out uh, uh, on campus, but not with coaches. Yeah, I don't think it's that different. So two two specific reasons, two specific ways it dif- it's been different is the time. So they're only allowed into the facility for one hour. So they're doing their workouts with our strength coach, Corinne, for one hour. So if normally in the summer, if it would go a little bit longer, we would allow it to go a little bit longer. But now it's one hour just so they can clean the facility and then get the next team that needs to come in after that. And then the second piece is they're not playing any pickup. Uh, that's not allowed on our facility right now. And again, I'm okay with that. We will be fine if they start to allow us to do that towards the end of July, um, then that will help. There's no question about that. But those are probably the two areas that it's a little bit different. So just time and then obviously the pickup piece of it's not necessarily happening. Coach, in terms of a 2020 schedule possibility and such. I know there's things to be worked out with the ACC and non-conference opponents. Uh, Anything that you can update us with as far as the schedule goes? Yeah, I just got an update yesterday from Butler that they will not be able to play. Um, It was only a scrimmage, so it doesn't affect us that much, um, but they will not be able to play. So as far as our ACC games, as far as the rest of my non-conference schedule, all of that is currently intact. So we don't... um, don't have any issues right now, but certainly I do think that that's uh, that's going to add another layer if and when that happens as well. Coach, how, how you know for that if it does end up being August third or that you know night, how, how excited will you be, or and are you anxious to get? just to get back with them. And I know everything's been on Zoom and and different things like that, but just to be able to be back in a room with your team or on the field with your team, whatever, um, with everything that's gone on, how anxious will you be? Yeah, I think that's, um, I'm kind of jealous that they're all back there now together training and working out um, and we aren't necessarily back on campus or can't work out with them just yet. Um, So I think uh, August 4th is probably going to be a complete wash because we'll be so excited that we won't be productive, but I do think it'll be fun for all of us to be back together and, and again to follow the protocols and make sure that we're doing what we need to do to ensure that we have as long of a season as we possibly can. So um, I know they're super excited that they're finally back together and I know myself and our coaching staff is is very eager to get back in the office and certainly back with the team. As far as the yeah, newcomers are concerned, HAS 11 on, on a similar point, how, how closely are you watching the coronavirus numbers within the state just kind of making sure that, that everything you know levels out or even decreases just a little bit so you can have that day? Yeah, I mean, probably just as much as everybody else is watching it. You know, it's um, it's a global pandemic. It's something we all have to be very aware of. I'm also the mother of an 11-year-old son, so I have to make sure I'm cautious with what he's looking to do. I'm the mother of 28 uh 20 year old girls so I have to be very cautious and make sure I am I'm aware of what's going on out there um, but I also truly believe in our leadership and trust the decisions that they're making with the guidance of the medical professionals um, in no way do we want to put anybody in harm's way or jeopardize their health at all um, so we will do everything that we're supposed to do and we won't make any decisions that could potentially um, endanger anybody Karen, hey, it's Jody again. With, you mentioned your newcomers earlier. You've got some talent coming, so much talent coming back on the on the roster. What do you kind of expect from the newcomers this season once you get them on campus? Yeah, so we've got eight. Um, two are already currently enrolled last spring, or a shortened, condensed version of the spring, and then we've got six new ones. Um, they are all coming in July 7th, and uh, that's a good thing. For sure, because if at a bare minimum, they get at least four or five weeks with our strength coach, we can help prepare their bodies for what's about to hit them come August 4th. Um, And because we have not played in March, I really feel like this class, while they might not be as prepared as we need them to be, they might actually see more playing time than they would regularly. Um, And that's partly because we have not played since March. And I'd be it'd be 
ridiculous for me to continue to think that we could put our players in a 90 minute game and not need to sub or go to the bench um, with certainly thinking about a potential injury that could be looming. Um, they're just not conditioned and prepared for the game, just like anybody else isn't, just like everybody else isn't. Um, so we have to be really, really careful with regard to how many minutes we're pushing some of our starters. So some of these new kids, it might be a baptism by fire. They might be getting some experiences a little bit earlier than maybe they're ready for, they're prepared for, but certainly there'd be no substitute for experience. And then as far as the returning players, uh, Amina's had such a great career. What, what do you kind of, how do you, how do you put her, how do you put her trajectory and, and her growth over the, over the course of the first few years in words and then where she's at right now, kind of what you expect her to get better at this year? Yeah, so I think, you know, Amina, when she was in high school and with her club team, Amina had to solve problems always by herself. Um, and she did that for us when she first came to Louisville. And I think where the greatest area for growth for her has been is that she is now solving problems for us as a team, but she's also incorporating all of our other great players. So if you key in completely on Amina, then she'll set somebody else up. Um, and you really, quite frankly, can't key in on just Amina because she's that good. So I do think her growth is beyond just what how she can impact the game but how she allows other players on our team to impact the game and and for me and I joke with Amina all the time for me um, as having been a former midfielder her final pass her ability to continue to get players in um, and allow them to score goals and set them up is where she needs to continue to develop and while she's made some good strides with that I still think she has to be better if she has aspirations and I know she does of playing in the NWSL or potentially even overseas so um in that final third, really being a little bit more creative for other players, um, that would be the area of growth for her. And, and I, she knows it, and she works tirelessly on it, and I think that that's something that we'll, we'll see that she has added to her game this fall. Coach, you've also got the outstanding goalkeeper, Gabby, because the Ellis returning, she was so important to the team last year. Just talk about her leadership and, and, and things that she'll do for the team. Yeah, Gabby's another one who her growth has been amazing. When she was coming out of high school, she was there was nobody harder on Gabby Cazellas than Gabby Cazellas. So she's really learned to take a deep breath and not marinate on a mistake that she's made. Um, and she's been outstanding. Again, I think I've told you, Paulie, specifically that I think she's the best goalkeeper in the ACC. Um, so we're really, really banking on her and Amina, obviously, to be the leaders of the team on the field. And certainly both of them are also leaders off the field as well. So um, Gabby's she's very, very good. There's no question about that. She's had experiences with our youth national team, and she also has aspirations to play professionally. And, and I truly believe that she'll be able to do that as well. Anything else for coach? Thank you all for uh, for attending today. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Thanks, Karen.